Well, the House had a vote today, and it was utterly and completely meaningless. You know, I don't like being the wet blanket around here, but somebody has to tell the truth. They went through another one of their fan dances there, and they got 39 Democrats to join with them. Yes, they voted in a two-page bill, at least it was only two pages, that um, uh, insurance companies should be allowed, in essence, uh, to continue to offer the plans that they're offering. I thought Obama just did this by uh, imperial fiat. And so uh, Harry Reid, they had to wake him up, you know, rub the spittle off his mouth, put his pants on, drag him to the Senate floor, uh, long enough for him to say, hey, we, uh, we won't be voting on that. So they won't be voting on that. And off they went. They went home. Job well done. Uh, Mark, well, Mark, what should they have done? I've only said it repeatedly. Now is the time to have a repeal vote. No, not that it'll pass right away. None of this is going to pass right away. Remember who the president is? But the American people, as of right now, you ready for this? The American people right now cannot stand the President of the United States. Because he betrayed them. The American people cannot stand Congress. You want to know why? Because half of it betrayed them and the other half is a bunch of knuckleheads. The American people right now cannot stand the Supreme Court. You want to know why? Because of John Roberts, that's why. And the other four who turned the Constitution into a pretzel and rather than defend us, participated in this. I mean, now is the time to say that this law has to be repealed and that is how you get your health care back. That is how you get your medical coverage. Why is this so damn complicated? What's your solution? What's your solution? My solution is called, ready for this one? Capitalism. Now's the time to promote capitalism. And what does that mean, capitalism under these circumstances? It means, let's see, private enterprises can put together policies and sell them. Sell them to individuals who have pre-existing conditions, might cost a little more. Sell them to individuals who want narrowly tailored policies for just catastrophic illnesses. Sell them to individuals who want everything covered. Sell them to women, men. You could even sell policies with contraceptives in them if you want them. Just imagine competition, a vigorous market, all kinds of policies being offered across state lines, within states, between localities. It would be a marvelous thing. It's also called, ready for this, liberty. So we have capitalism and we have liberty. Then we have choices, we have competition. We have reduced prices, increased uh, choices. It's a great thing. It works for toasters, you know. Oh, it does. It works for toasters. It works for all kinds of stuff. We even have a, a division within the Justice Department where I used to work, and it's called the Antitrust Division. Now, I don't much like this division because, like everything else the government does, it's the opposite of what it says. So it's not really antitrust. It's anti-capitalism. But let's play along for a minute. So we actually have a division within the Justice Department that's supposed to bust trusts. And yet, the biggest trust in America today is the federal government. Who's going to bust that? So the answer to the debacle now of a non-existent health care market, it's really non-existent. The government controls most of it. And even the parts the government control are out of control, if you will, is to allow the market to work, to allow the market to get into the system. 
And I don't want to hear any more, well, what about all those people who won't be covered? Here we are witnessing the federal government under Barack Obama throwing people off their health care plans, private plans, plans they wanted, plans they paid for, interfering with contracts that individuals have with their employer or their employers have with insurance companies or individuals have with insurance companies, destroying contract law, destroying private property rights, destroying health care coverage, and you're going to lecture me? about all the health care that will be lost? What? That's simply not the case. Who's going to make this case? Certainly not this guy, Fred Upton, Mr. Anti-Light Bulb. The guy who led the way to get rid of the incandescent light bulb. So I have to collect them in my house like it's East Germany piled up in, the, in my storage area. Hey, what else are they going to ban? Let me pile that up too. Trans fat, do they sell that in containers? I don't even know. I better start saving for that. He's the guy leading the way. So I'm not, I'm sorry folks, I'm not one of these Washington superficial guys who's going to say, wow, that vote today, that was important. It was a joke. It did nothing. It's not going to do anything. Period. Why don't we make the case for capitalism and liberty? Most of the problems we have in this country are because of government. Did you know that? Most of the problems we have in this country, they're not because of individual liberty. They're not because of private property rights. They're not because of our constitutional system, such as it is anymore. It's because of government. The public school system. A monopoly, if you will. I mean, just, just, uh, I mean... I, I look at it this way. I think about liberty and opportunity. I just think of the, the, the incredible opportunities that it provides. And then I look at these knuckleheads, these politicians and so forth, telling us how to live and where to live. I mean, I saw this press conference today, or was it yesterday, with Nancy Pelosi and that whole uh, conga line of uh, so-called leaders they have there in the Democrat Party. I've never heard stupider people in my life. More uninformed. Less learned. I don't mean not book smart. I mean learned. Telling us, you know, how great this is and what we should expect. And I thought to myself, if I had to pick ten of the stupidest people in America, it'd be right there. And they have all this power over us, which they're not supposed to have. Anyway, so Fred Upton, other than four Republicans, only four Republicans voted against this. Fred Upton and the boys and 39 Democrats voted to do nothing today. Nothing today. And if they think that's going to have an impact on the American people, it's not. Doing nothing is unacceptable anymore. It's deceptive. Now, it's Friday And uh, given the fact that it's Friday, I want to do this one more time. Particularly you drones out there who've unleashed all this crap on society. You drones out there who voted for Obama and vote for the Democrats. Hey, hey, I'm voting Democrat. Every election day, hey, I vote Democrat, Democrat. And you try and reason with these people. You try to explain to them why it's a mistake. You try, no, 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 Democrat, Democrat. It's a mental condition. It's like Tourette's. Anyway, I'm going to play a little montage from the Washington Free Beacon. Uh, You uh, patriotic, regular Americans out there, just bear with me. You liberal, irregular Americans, this is for you. This is an honor of you, because I want to shove it down your throat. Cut one, go. If you've got health care already, then you can keep your plan if you are satisfied with it. If you like the plan you have, you can keep it. I intend to keep this promise. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. If you like your plan and your doctor, you can keep them. You'll be able to keep your health care plan. If you like your plan, you keep your plan. If you like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. If you like your current insurance, you keep that insurance. Period. End of story. If you've got health insurance, you can keep it. If you have insurance that you like, then 
you will be able to keep that insurance. If you like your health care plan, you keep your health care plan. Nobody's going to mm-hmm. force you mm-hmm. to leave your health care plan. If you like your health care plan, you will keep it. Your plan. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. No matter what you've heard, if you like your doctor or health care plan, you can keep it. Stop. If you like your You drones out there, this is for you. I hope you have the volume up. Go. You can he- keep your health care plan. If you like your private health insurance plan, you can keep it. If you like your private health insurance plan, you can keep your plan. Period. Nothing in this plan will require you or your employer to change the coverage of the doctor you have. If you are among the hundreds of millions of Americans who already have insurance, nothing in my plan will require you or your employer to change the coverage or the doctor you have. If you want to keep the health insurance you got, you can keep it. Now that's enough. This goes on another two minutes. That's only 36 examples. I have a question for you. It's a perfectly legitimate question. This man and his party have destroyed health care for millions of Americans. You folks are not going to get it back unless this entire system is withdrawn. Millions more of you are going to fall into the same trap. Remember, he's talking about one year. One year. They get them through the midterm elections. Millions of you who work for larger businesses, 50 or more employees, you're next. Tens of millions of you. This is the greatest scam in modern American history. I talked about it last week. It is the greatest fraud in modern American history. There's never been a Ponzi scheme like it. There's never been a corporate crime like it. Never, ever before. So let me put it to you this way. If this isn't an impeachable offense, then what is? He lied repeatedly. He schemed repeatedly. His entire party did it. This is an attack on the American system from within. That's exactly what it was. If this is not an impeachable offense, then what is?